So, if I want to add additional segments to this uh, to basically to be able to control a geometry with it from multiple uh, bendy bones, usually, I mean, what you could do is you could select the bones, duplicate things, and move them, but I find that it's uh, cleaner to basically build, create new bones. Uh, I think it's partially because some of the I've actually had problems if I just duplicate it. And I think that in most cases, sometimes it maintains the connections to old data that it shouldn't, even when I delete certain connections. Could try to clean that data out, but it's often easier just to create new bones. And we can work with the existing bones that we have to resolve some of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here really close. I'm going to select, make sure I get the end bones here and this little tail for this bone down here and then I'm just going to pull it down. It's a little short in this segment. And the great thing about, blend, about Blender is it's very good with uh, handling little things like this, uh, especially when it comes to uh, redistributing weights when you make changes to the bones. So it's very easy to make these little modifications without causing any huge, huge issues. And so once again, I make a new make a new bendy. I'm going to extrude out a new end joint here, or end bone. And we're going to control Alt S, scale that down. So we create another bendy in here. Add some new segments. And I'll do about half of what I did before. So I'll do, make that one 10, and I'll make this one 10 as well. It's controlling about half as much, so I'll cut it down a bit. And so we'll relabel this one. I'll call this one. I'll call this one bendy end. I'll go back to the one that was in there before. Label that one bendy mid. And we'll leave this one as bendy end. And don't forget, you want to label everything uh, just because it makes your life easier especially when it comes to mirroring things and using various tools in the software. It's easier with very specific names, easier to find things. Uh, it just makes everything a bit simpler to deal with. So, Bendy and Bendy 2. There we go. Okay, so it's going to be the same thing. We want our mid to basically be our base and so that one's going to be directly connected into the bendy so it's basically going to be parented directly into it connected to it but our end here we want to be detached from it and don't forget this one is actually still detached from the first bendy because all we're doing is recreating the same setup just right above it so this one we need to Clear the connection, disconnect it, and then I can just parent it directly in, keeping offset to the other control bone ahead of it. Again, we want to go in and make sure that our deform values are set correctly, so disable deform on that one, make sure that one's still off, that one's fine, and that's on for that bendy, on for that bendy, and so that should be fine. And we come in here to this second bendy and do the same thing again. So, absolute, we can come in and say, let's see, it starts going to be the mid, and its end is going to be the end. And the one below it, of course, should have already updated relative to the changes in the names, which it did. Now, I find sometimes uh, with these structures that maybe absolute doesn't work for the end handle, and sometimes you can use things like relative or tangent to get it to behave in more in more the way they want. Especially if you have a curve structure sometimes, I'll find it's good to use tangent versus absolute. Uh, and even if you don't use those, you can come in and use uh, a couple of different settings to essentially reshape this little bendy bone so it can fit a curve, for example, or, or a com more complex shape. Or you can just use more bones. Um, now you can't get this same setup to work properly, at least I haven't been able to get it to work properly with m multiple bendy bones, 
created in between two controllers. I can kind of get it to work, but it's just not as not as clean. Uh, creating a setup like this was a bit cleaner. You do have to do a little more work when it comes to animation because you have to control these mid these uh, intersections. But otherwise, it usually works out rather well. But you can use these curve in and curve out, so you can actually bend your bendy bones to fit a curved surface. Comes in very handy for things like uh, belts and skirts and you know other things that have a bit more of an organic deformation where you need specific control. Okay. So now that that's in place, we need to do the same thing we did with the other setup. We need to come in and we need to take a look at this. Now, as you can see, this one is not responding too well to the change. And that's because I've moved things around a bit and it's obviously got some settings already in place. And so I'll need to recreate some of those things. So I deleted my stretch too. And remember this one's stretching to the middle. So I'm gonna select the middle and then just select it, Control Shift C and stretch too, and then it's fine. Go to the top, same thing, Control shift c stretch 2. Okay, and so now if we just test it, as you can see, we've got our same functionality in there. And as you can see, because I set up the hierarchy so that our top is basically parented into this one. Everything follows consistently. Now we could even take it instead of parenting directly this one, you can go all the way to the bottom and then you just have a completely GUI setup without any hierarchy. It just depends on how you want it to function. Now what we have to fix next is we need to fix the weights. So we come in here to our weighted area and what we can do is we can actually just add in our separate bendy joint that's in here. And so that was bendy2 is what I named it. You could name it something else if you're doing this but fairly simple to do it come in and i'm going to come in and call it uh, i'm just going to plus and we'll say bendy dot zero zero two now the great thing about blender is it's actually fairly intelligent when it comes to weights and naming and for text groups Essentially, you just put it in there and it will recognize it as long as you've typed in the name exactly as it appears on the bone. Works really great. Now, even if I wanted to change the name of this one to match the name of this one, it would basically change, switch the name and with it would also switch the weight influence, which is very cool. I've done that for switching something, the control of something from left to right, and it works really well. Okay, so now we need about half of those to be controlled by our bendy number two. So I'm going to select my vertex, use vertex selection. I'm going to select the half I want and then just assign it. I'm going to come to the middle here. I'm going to set my weight to 0.5 just to quickly rough this out. And then I'm going to switch over to my bendies, assign that as 0.5, and then go to the top and completely remove it from the first bendy. And that should mostly be it. I'll take these three towards the middle, and I'll actually just smooth these out a bit, just so that we know that this all blends rather well. And I'll do it for both influences. And that should be it. And so now if I go in, switch myself over to pose mode. And I will rotate this. You can see now that we've got segment control. We can control separate segments of it. And we have our hierarchy. It also works. And don't forget, if you're actually animating this, you want to switch to individual origins so that when you select multiple objects, it will rotate both of them instead of just the one. As you can see, the top is rotating. But as you can see, since it's essentially connected here, it's rotating based on its pivot, not the pivot of the object below it. But it's fairly simple to clean that up. 
since we have the basic pose and we can still do things like this. And so now we have a nice stretchy, gooey hierarchy with the root is, you know, essentially the end of our tail.